Konnichiwa! I'm Yui and I'm 12. Please like this video! Welcome to Japan! I was raised by my mom! Have you noticed how different we looked? I'd always wondered why I was so different from ordinary Japanese girls. None of my friends had blonde hair or light eyes. That's because you take after your father. He was Russian. Unfortunately, dad died right after I was born. As far as I knew, we didn't even have any photos of him. So I just took mom's word for it. Standing out so much in Japan wasn't easy. I was a black sheep wherever I went. The other kids avoided me, and some even made fun of me for the way I looked. Yui, you're just like Hermione from Harry Potter. Brave and quick-witted? Nah, I mean, you're a half-blood too. <laughs> that witch's name was Satomi. She was my classmate and always tried to turn my life into a living nightmare. Satomi was always picking on and making fun of me. She made me feel like an outcast. My life was by no means easy. It was hard for mom to provide for both of us. Our house was more of a decrepit shack with a leaky roof. Mom sold fish at the market, and I changed into dirty rags and begged rich tourists for money after classes. I hated it, of course, but I did it to help mom anyway. Still, I was afraid my classmates would find out about it and I would become the laughingstock again. One day, my fears almost became in reality. I was begging tourists for money at the market as usual when Satomi saw me. Sir, spare a coin for a poor orphan? That beggar looks familiar. Wait, is that Yui? My classmate headed over in my direction, but I saw her and made a break for it. Luckily, I managed to hide behind a fish counter. Dang it, where is she? Never mind, I'll just film Yui begging for money next time. Everyone at school will have a good laugh. Satomi walked past me, and I breathed a sigh of relief. I was shaken. For the love of God! All I wanted was to be an ordinary kid and have enough money for basic needs. Was that too much to ask for? It seemed like some things just weren't meant to be. The next day, Satomi came to the market Market to get proof that I was a beggar. She crept up to me to try and take a photo, but I covered my face with my hands and tried to blend in with the crowd. Stop! I know it's you, Yui! I'd almost reached my hiding place when one of the passersby suddenly grabbed me and lifted me up into the air. It was a Japanese woman with blonde hair and light eyes, just like mine. She was wearing expensive clothes and had two huge bodyguards standing beside her. I was afraid they'd mistaken me for a thief. But then, tears of joy suddenly streamed down the woman's face. My daughter! I finally found you! I was so confused it left me speechless. Satomi's eyes bugged out. She didn't even dare come closer and ran away without a word. The woman hugged me tight, put me back down, and bombarded me with questions. My poor girl! Did you have to live on the streets like an orphan? It's okay. Mommy's here now. Everything's going to be all right. I didn't understand what was going on. One of the bodyguards asked that strange woman, Miss Kiku, would you like us to help walk the girl to your limo? Of course. We're going home. Home. My jaw dropped to the floor. A limo? Mm. Home? Wait, hold on a second. I didn't sign up for that. I jerked away and ran like a bat out of hell. Sweetie, where are you going? I ran straight to mom. I thought she would hide me, but I was in for a surprise. Miss Kiku, this girl's name is Yui. She has no one to look after her, so your kindness spooked her. Mom leaned close to my ear and quickly told me in a whisper that I should play along. Act like you're her daughter. I'll explain everything later. With those words, she pushed me towards Miss Kiku and gave me a sly wink. I didn't know what it all meant, but decided to listen to my mom. So I took the rich woman's hand and we got into her limo. Soon, I found myself in Miss Kiku's house. Or should I say mansion? It looked luxurious enough for an emperor to live in. The maids there helped me wash up, combed my hair, and dressed me in an expensive dress. I hardly recognized myself when I looked in the mirror. Wow, I look like a doll. Miss Kiku came up behind me and looked into the mirror too. See how similar we look? You must have wondered why your appearance was so extraordinary, right, sweetheart? I hesitantly nodded, and she told me her dad was an ordinary Japanese man, but her mom was Swedish. Kiku took after her mom. That's why she had blonde hair and light eyes. Yui, you have your grandmother's eyes. And her blonde hair. I wanted to say she was mistaken, and I wasn't her daughter. But mom had asked me to play along, so I kept quiet. Besides, Miss Kiku had an amazing house. I was given a huge room full of expensive toys. She also had a personal chef who cooked a ton of delicious dishes for me. I felt like a real princess the whole day. Before going to bed, the owner of the mansion came to my room to wish me goodnight. Sleep, baby. We still have so much to talk about. I 
really liked it there, but kept tossing and turning and couldn't stop thinking about my mom. While I was enjoying all that luxury, she was sleeping in our tiny shack. As soon as everyone had fallen asleep, I climbed out the window and I headed home. Huey, did you run away? I can't leave you. Besides, I need to know what's going on. Sweetie, this is our chance to start over. Act like Miss Kiku's long lost daughter and bring me her money and jewelry. That isn't right. What isn't right is that some people get everything while others beg for food on the street. If you don't want to live in poverty your whole life, we need to fool Miss Kiku. She is the richest woman in Japan. She won't even notice if a few of her jewels go missing. That gave me pause. On the one hand, lying was bad. But on the other hand, I didn't want to spend the rest of my life begging for money at the market. In the end, I agreed to do it for myself and my mom. I came back to the mansion and snuck into my room before sunrise. The next day, I acted like I really was the daughter of the richest woman in Japan. At breakfast, I asked her to tell me about the day her daughter, that is me, went missing. Miss Kiku told me the tragic story. Oh, you were probably so young that you don't remember anything. Ten years ago, when you were only two, we were on the beach with your dad. We only turned away for a minute, but our baby had already disappeared. We looked for you for so long, but the searches yielded nothing. Her happy life was over. Kiku wiped her tears with a napkin and said that her husband left her after that, and she fell into depression, but she never gave up hope of finding her daughter. She hired the best detectives in the world year after year, but it was all for nothing. Until yesterday, fate has finally smiled on me, and you came home. My dear girl, I almost burst into tears as I listened to that miserable tale. I felt sorry for Miss Kiku. She had all the wealth in the world, but had been so miserable for years anyway. I couldn't hurt her feelings and admit that I wasn't her daughter, so I kept pretending. I didn't remember my parents, and I was homeless all these years, but I still went to school. Thank goodness we found each other. The weekend came to an end, and I went back to school. As expected, Satomi had already told everyone about the scene she'd seen at the market. My classmates crowded around me and bombarded me me with questions as soon as they saw me. I saw you begging on the street, and then some rich lady caught you. What was that, huh? Spill. Begging? So tell me, I think you got me confused with someone else. I'm the daughter of the richest woman in Japan. I don't need to beg anyone for anything. As proof, I showed her the phone that Miss Kiku had given me. It was the newest model. Everyone gasped in admiration and started whispering to each other. Satomi's so face twisted. She didn't believe me. I know you're hiding something and I will prove it. I wanted to go bonkers on her. Did she have nothing better to do? Was huh. messing with me her only hobby? I'd had it with her. Still, I tried to look calm and even forced a smile. You're wasting your time, Satomi, but I wish you luck anyway. After classes, I returned to Miss Kiku's mansion. As soon as everyone fell asleep that night, I left my room and threw everything that looked expensive in my backpack. Hmm. Some cash, jewelry, and a gold statuette. After that, I climbed out the window and brought my loot to my real mother. I'd never hmm. seen her smile so happily before. Well done, Yui. Keep up the good work and we'll be rich in no time. I didn't like stealing from Miss Kiku because she was so kind to me. I knew that this was the only way for us to live without a worry in the world, just like I'd always wanted. I hugged mom goodbye and I headed back to the mansion. I was about to get into my room through my window when someone appeared behind me. Gotcha. I caught you red-handed, you little liar. Oh no! It was one of Miss Kiku's bodyguards. He said that they had followed me and overheard my talk with my mom. We know you aren't the boss's kid. You're a cunning thief. Are you gonna tell the truth to Miss Kiku? We should, but we'll let you keep your dirty secret if you do something for us. The goon smirked and said that they wanted to get a cut too. That rich wacko pays tons of money to private detectives instead of raising our salaries. We're sick of it. Give us some of what you've stolen and we'll keep quiet about your lies. <sighs> Holy heck! Their greed knew new bounds. I couldn't let them ruin our plan though, so I agreed to their terms. For a while, there was no issue. Miss Kiku and I spent our days like mother and daughter. After the sunset, I would steal her jewelry and hand it over to my mother and the bodyguards. Miss Kiku didn't notice anything because she wanted my lies to be true. She believed with all her heart that I was her long lost daughter and genuinely cared for me. The guilt was eating me alive. Lying to Miss Kiku was getting harder by the day. My mom and the bodyguards got a taste for easy money and soon we're no longer satisfied with the things I stole for them. Yui, this isn't enough. We'll never get rich like this. As if that wasn't enough, Satomi kept being a pain in the butt. She was constantly following me and trying to find out hmm. the truth. One day, she almost saw me meet my mom at the market. I felt trapped, even though I was surrounded by luxury and wanted for nothing. This wasn't the life I'd always dreamed of. It wasn't peaceful and I wasn't being honest. 
Then, one day, I snuck out of the mansion again and brought the loot to our shack. Mom wasn't there, so I decided to hide it under her bed. Mm. To my surprise, I found a box with our family photo in it. Mom, Dad, and I were in it, but for some reason, he looked like an ordinary Japanese man, even though Mom always said he was Russian. Something wasn't adding up. At that moment, Mom walked into the house. I waved the photo in front of her face and demanded an explanation. Oh, I didn't want you to find out like this. You're not really my daughter. Ten years ago, my husband and I found you near a beach. Soon after that, my husband died and I was so lonely I decided to keep you. I told you your dad was Russian so you wouldn't ask me any questions about your unusual looks. Can you believe it? The woman I'd always thought was my mother had been lying to me my whole life. It didn't matter now, though. After all, I realized I really could be Miss Kiku's daughter. I didn't say anything, I just took the photo and ran to the mansion at lightning speed. My heart sank when I arrived there and saw Satomi. The worst thing was that she was talking to Miss Kiku. And here's your fake daughter. Oh, I'm beyond happy. Yui's real mother is a poor fishmonger. I saw the meeting up at the market in secret. Yui, what is this girl talking about? Have you been lying to me? I plucked up the courage and I told her that at first, I really had pretended to be her daughter so greedy people could cash in on her grief. But then, I found out the truth. I considered that woman from the market to be my mother, but I just found out that I've been lied to my whole life. She and her husband found me near a beach 10 years ago. I showed Miss Kiku the photo as proof. You see, I don't look like my parents because we aren't related. Miss Kiku, I think I might really be your daughter. To my surprise, Miss Kiku didn't seem pissed off. She burst into tears of joy and pulled me into a tight hug. It's okay, Yui. I'm not mad at you for lying. What matters is we're together now. Satomi couldn't accept defeat and lost it. She growled that it wasn't over and ran away. But I didn't care about her anymore. I hugged my real mom and believed with all my heart that nothing bad would happen to me again. Everything finally fell into place. I was on cloud nine, not because I inherited a fortune, but because I found a loving and caring mother who'd been searching for me for 10 whole years. Oh, right. You should have seen the faces of those shameless bodyguards. When I informed them, they'd no longer be getting Miss Kiku's money from me. You have nothing else to blackmail me with, so forget about it. Better yet, start looking for a new job. You don't deserve to work for someone as kind as my mom. How could a brat outsmart us? <laughs> It was nice to feel like a winner. As for the woman who raised me, she kept coming to the mansion for a long time, hoping to make up with me. I forgave her, but I couldn't forget that she'd been using me. That's why I calmly asked her to stay out of my life from then on. I finally found peace, and I didn't want to lose it again. Unfortunately, things soon took a turn for the worse. One morning, a car drove up to the mansion. Two people got out of it. A serious looking man and a girl my age. The girl had blonde hair just like me. What a strange coincidence. My stomach was in knots. I had a bad feeling about this. When they walked into the mansion, I overheard their conversation with my mom. The man turned out to be a private detective hired by Ms. Kiku. He was saying he'd finally found her long-lost daughter. The man even had a DNA test result that confirmed what he was saying. Ms. Kiku looked at the girl confused and then threw her arms around her. You look just like your grandmother! Without a doubt, you are my real daughter. My heart broke into a thousand pieces. Was Kiku not my mom after all? I felt like a stranger in that house. I left a note wishing Ms. Kiku and her daughter happiness, packed up all my things and snuck out through the window. I wandered the streets as I didn't know where to go. I'd lost everything and felt like nothing in the world could make me smile again. When I was passing by my school, I ran into mm -hmm. Satomi. She smirked <laughs> at me and said she'd finally found out the truth about my origins. My dad works in the city archives. I snuck in there, looked through all the documents, and found out your real parents live in a neighboring province. They lost you 10 years ago. I even have their address. You're not the daughter of the richest woman in Japan after all. Take that. Satomi threw a note with my parents' address on it at me and burst into laughter. She must have thought I'd be gutted. But instead of getting upset, I hugged her, overjoyed. Thank you, Satomi. You have no idea how much you've helped me. Then I ran to the nearest bus stop. Satomi was left staring after me in confusion. What was that? I'm going to go find my real parents. I hope I'll finally get to enjoy the life I've always dreamed of. So this isn't the end, but only the beginning of my adventures. Do you want to know what happens next? Tell me in the comments down below and don't forget to press like.